Welcome back to Nine Works TV. I'm here in my most favourite place in the whole of Oxfordshire. It is, of course, Right Tune. Little Irish is on the ramp. So very shortly, in a couple of weeks, in fact, I'll be taking part in the 2023 Nine Works Road Trip Spectacular to Norway. I am, of course, going to be taking my 25-year-old 911. I want to make sure it's in tip-top condition, which is why we're back here at Right Tune. The guys are going to fix a couple of niggling issues that the car has developed in the last few weeks and give it a check over to make sure it's going to be in tip top condition in order to do what is going to amount to some quite substantial miles. Let's see how we get on. Then after that, at the end of the video, the boys are going to talk through the multi-link suspension system on modern 911s, talk through each of the parts, their functions, as well as some pros and cons. First up for my pre-Norway road trip health check, the guys addressed my illuminated brake pad warning light. My pads were fine, but the sensors themselves were fried from that recent track day at Donington Park. Joe soon had these knackered sensors replaced and the warning light was soon gone too. Then an oil change, which I routinely do every 5,000 miles or so. May need to check for metal substances in the filter, which suggests the IMS is about to lunch itself. But this is also to ensure the flat six is as ready as it can be for those big European miles ahead. I'm going to have a special passenger with me for the road trip who wouldn't be tolerating the current stiff chassis setup. So Joe softened things up only slightly by adjusting the KWV3s. And with that, a general appraisal of the 996's current condition was incoming. Right, so yeah, just the flanges from the gearbox, they're just leaking. This one's a little bit worse than that side. It's fairly common at this sort of mileage. Um, it's a fairly straightforward fix. It's not too much of an issue. Okay. Um, and the, and the back plates have corroded themselves loose, which probably needs replacing. You can put a big washer under there, but they're not that expensive, so it's easier just to put a new one on it. Kind of. Other than that, it's in fairly good condition, considering the mileage and how much you drive it. Yeah, you, you drive it to Norway? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Given the all clear by right tune, I indulged in some DIY at home. First clearing out debris from the front rads, before swallowing a brave pill and electing to neaten up the stone chip centre section of the front bumper, which had taken an absolute hammering since the big respray a couple of years ago. Now you'll know I'm usually a checkbook mechanic, but time was not on my side. So I split down, sanded and sprayed the bumper grill in my garden one sunny weekend. And you know what? I'm completely fine with it. The car was certified ready for its next European adventure. More on that in another video soon, but first back to Right Tune to explain Porsche's multi-link chassis system. Before we get going, I'd also like to say a big thanks to Myla for supplying all the arms currently fitted to the underneath of Little Irish. All Myla's parts come with an awesome two year unlimited miles warranty, and you can order yours now for a variety of Porsches from heritagepartscenter.com. All right, gents, so the multi-link rear suspension on modern 911s, introduced from the 993 onwards. Uh, what is it and how does it work? Basically, you've got multiple different components controlling the suspension system. By having more links, there's therefore more pivots. You get more control, you get better ride quality. Obviously, vibrations are less because you've got more bushes in the system. The camber and toe adjustments aren't as they don't interfere with each other as much as, as an early car with a, with a spring plate on it. There are many parts to this multi-link suspension. Yes. Um, could we talk through each individual component or arm? This is, uh, this is the biggest one, one that like, everyone commonly knows, I think, on the internet. They call it the coffin arm, or it's the lower wishbone. It's this piece here, and bolts on the subframe to the hub. And commonly these fail, the bushes fail. And that would normally give you a, 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 a creaky or a squeaky. Sometimes the bottom ball joint fails as well, and that can create a knock. It controls the camera of the system as well, because the camera bolt is what, is what locates to the subframe, and that's what controls the camera. Absolutely, and that's the thing we have quite a lot of trouble with some, sometimes. It's an eccentric bolt, we turn that and adjust the geometry. But there's, a, there's an alley bush. That bush there is. Uh, is aluminium and this bolt steel and obviously they wrap with each other so sometimes what should be undo the nut and f throw it out it's you know, you're there for an hour to do a couple of arms it can take an afternoon this is what we change all the time keep them in stock loads of them this is probably a close second 
the uh, diagonal arm or tuning fork, as some people say, because... <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, eh? So, um, yeah, and basically, it's quite simply, it bolt, this bolts up to the, the chassis up here, and it creates like a triangular, well, suspension component. And it's the same at the front end. It's only at the rear that's different. We've then, on the rear, we've got a rear toe arm as well as two upper arms. These are the most neglected arm of the whole system. So these, this is the top arm. Uh, I call it a control arm, but the internet calls it a dog bone because it looks like a dog bone. But the problem is they, they wear out just like all the others do and nobody seems to change them. I think a lot of the problems with the wearing out suspension is these because they get neglected these days. Yeah. On an early, like a 993, these are adjustable. Um, and they to adjust, adjust the, what they call the kinematic toe, which is basically the toe change during compression. They've done away with that these days, and so they're just fixed late. But if you lower one of these, what you really need to do with the front one is lengthen this, which you could do on a 993 by the eccentric. But for some reason with these, they just, they got rid of it. Joe made a good point earlier of saying, because obviously we don't want to be negative about this, because obviously it's a step forward compared to a training arm. But when they're older, you've got a lot more bushes. So on like a three, two, there's two bushes. And on this, six to 10 bushes per side. Now I'd have to actually, we need to actually figure that out. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, if they're yeah. all worn, you can imagine it's all doing this. So you, your toe and your camber could be changing quite a lot, which is gonna then make the car really nervous. And on a 911 with all the weight in the back, that's a bit of a disaster. So like I think you've noticed from having your car, all the every single arm change has made such a big difference. So another arm in the system is the toe arm. This one is located from the subframe to the back of the hub. Does what it says on the tin. It's just the toe with via the eccentric there. These tend to get the ball joints go quite a lot on these. And obviously what we're... The rubber bush go on that as well. They do, but the problem you get with these is because they don't get adjusted very often. When you do come to adjust it, it's C solid. Nearly nine times out of 10, and they are a pain in the I swear I can eat cut out. <laughs> and here we have my most favourite component, the rear anti-roll bar drop link, which connects to the rear um, shock absorber or strut and then to the rear anti-roll bar. Obviously that stops roll or sway, Americans call it sway bar. Well not stops, we can reduce it and use it to control it on very, very early cars. They actually didn't have them um, on the rear. These commonly fail, the, these bushes here, and that causes another like knocking sound. And also these, these rubber uh, bushes here, the rear anti-roll bar bushes, they can fail and ca cause a knock. And also due to corrosion and things, it, it can actually wear the bar away. So if you put some new bushes on it, actually they won't fit anymore and you have to replace the bar. People fit bigger or stiffer bars to stiffen up, you know, your roll or hollow bars. Um, to reduce weight, but also if you've got a hollow uh, tube, it's also, it stiffens it up as well. Uh, have you got anything else to add to that? Well, not really. I'm also, really, when you, there's the, the actual subframe bushes themselves, they're all obviously all part of the system as well, and they get overlooked. Um, they're obviously bushes that wear, that actually, which is what all the suspension hangs off, so. Thanks to Joe and Chris from Right Tune for imparting their knowledge on Porsche's Multilink system, and thanks to Myla for supplying all the arms used in this video.